How should banks respond to changes in regulation around digital and data? Chris Steele of KPMG says they should act positively, change their business model and grow revenues. But the situation does vary according to where in the world your bank is located. So Chris, in this whole digital and data transformation, uh, and we're obviously seeing some new regulations coming along. I mean, regulations playing catch up in a way. Uh, I mean, what are the, the key regulations that we need to be aware of? Well, the regulators themselves, the Financial Conduct Authority, the Bank of England, and regulators around the world are having to embrace digital regulation to be more effective and more efficient. And what they're, what they're doing is they're using machine learning and they're applying that machine learning over vast data sets to try and identify customer harms and market irregularities. And they're using that in conjunction with traditional tools of supervision. So it's not just about how they'll apply technology. Right, so they're using advanced technology as much as the banks are. That's right. That's exactly what they're trying to do. And they're using that in conjunction with specific actions they're taking, actions like a, co a coordinated international approach. For example, on artificial intelligence, you've got the European Commission's high-level expert working group on AI. They are also, they're using those coordinated international actions with changes to supervisory priorities and an expansion of the regulatory perimeter to really sort of try and tackle some of these challenges. OK, so if the regulators are moving that far ahead with new technology, banks can't really afford to get left behind. So how do they respond? Absolutely not. So the, the, the banks themselves need to be not just complying with ever-increasing amounts of, of technology regulation. They need to be shown to be taking some of these risks and these changes very, very seriously, which many of them are doing. Uh, and they also need to be making sure that they are keeping pace with the regulatory changes and they understand that the regulators will change and that it's a, a, a changing environment. So we hear a lot about RegTech. How much can the banks use RegTech as a way of solving some of these challenges? Absolutely. A, lo a lot of banks are looking to address some of the significant cost pressures they've got within their risk and compliance functions by making better use of technology. Those functions historically have been increasingly or intensely manual with huge numbers of headcounts. So this is a rich area for looking for cost reductions okay. and improved outcomes. Okay, now, now banks obviously think about regulation and compliance uh, as something also they have to do uh, and as a cost. Uh, but is there a way that they can sort of turn it to their advantage and actually see it with some revenue potential? Now, our vision of the future of financial services is one that's interconnected, it's frictionless and it's collaborative. And that may sound at odds with what we've just spoken about, the increasing risks, the heightened attention from regulators, but I don't think that is the case. I think there are positives, there are opportunities. For example, uh, on, cu on the customer data side, uh, giving customers informed, safe custody of their data. It's something you can probably charge for. Something you can charge for. It's going to be a commercial imperative, I think, in the future, an increasing commercial imperative. Right. Now, one of the problems that the banks have, especially if they operate globally, is the regulations on data and, and even the standards of things like open banking are completely different across the continents. Yeah. I mean, how do we deal with that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a huge challenge. There are obviously vast differences in different geographies, in approach to regulation, in different cultures. As you say, the, the oft-cited uh, example is in relation to data privacy. Analytics yeah. Yeah, between the Where far in China they don't care so much about it, and in Europe they're absolutely vigilant about it's very, it. Very, very different, exactly. And this creates huge challenges. When, if you want a, a frictionless global finance and payment system, what you need is consistency, consistency of technical standards. You need interoperability. These things which don't go hand in hand with the, the divergence of regulatory approach. And on open banking, and indeed on open finance, to have open banking and open finance, you need open data. Right. So um, do you see a way forward with this? Do you see, do you see um, the, the authorities cooperating on it? Or do you think the banks are going to have to find a way to solve the problem just on their own? There, there is, I think there's, yeah, you need both of those. There will be an increasing degree, I think, of, of collaboration internationally. But there will still be those, those divergent approaches. And actually, the divergence is not always a bad thing. You know, people think of arbitrage and concentration risk as bad things. You know, actually, a lot of companies want to promote their products and services in jurisdictions where there is sound regulation and high quality supervision. Think of the UK, for example, you know, we, we have benefited as a, as, a, as a geography from our world-class regulatory environments. Okay, we'll come and talk about geographies again in just a minute. Thank you.